I really loved growing up on campus. I don't know about you, but do you remember the first time you realized that normal houses in Ghana have walls around them? Yeah. I remember I was like, ah, the thing about our parents is they were okay with us being friends. Like, oh, be friends with your campus friends, right? But then a hey, evening out. So remember anytime we would meet, we have to go home before it's dark. Yeah. And you walking know? on campus, we mm. were kids walking in a university campus, campus, like literally predators all around. We also like, we were sheltered, but not really sheltered. Sheltered, yeah. Yes. Having your sister who was like a big sister to all of us mm -hmm. and, you know, all that. And then, um, you know, unfortunately... You know, she she started to have like struggles with um mental health with her mental health. Mm -hmm. And what was that like for you? Like I said, I was close to my sisters, but I was extra, extra, extra close to her. When my second sister got married, mm -hmm. I remember feeling like, wow, like so now she's married, she's left the house, she has somebody to vent to and share these things with. But my parents have each other. I have nobody I can mm. talk to now. Hi everyone, welcome to Trudy Talkative Podcast. I'm your host, Eno Kregren. I thought I knew you like 100%. 98%. What is this? <laughs> there's a reason for everything, but there's not a justification for everything. No, let me, let me start going. Where I'm coming from. That day is like I'm playing and then you come here. Come here. There is your friend. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to the Trudy Talkative Podcast. Today I have a very good friend of mine. She has been friends with me since, I don't know, since we we're about six. Yeah. Yeah, so we've been friends for like 25 plus years. Mm -hmm. I don't want anyone to know her age. <laughs> but, but yeah, and um, she's also a, a fashion business consultant. She's doing amazing work um, at Ace Avenue um, and also with fashion businesses. My best friend, Elom Amankwa. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> Hi. So um, today we'll be discussing um, sisterhood. Mm -hmm. You know, we've, we, I, I've been starting this um, topic where we talk about sisterhood, um, you know, a bit more. Um, but then with you, we'll dive a bit more um, into our friendship, mm -hmm. you know, because we, we are kind of like sisters in a way. But you had sisters, I didn't. So I believe that I needed you more. But hey, you know, we'll, we'll find out. So yeah, so today we, 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 the, the topic is the sister I needed. Okay. And I believe that you're the sister that I needed. Now, let's take it all the way back to growing up. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we grew up on a university campus. So it was like a small community. You tell me, just tell me, I mean, I know a lot about that, but tell me what it was like for you growing up on that campus. Growing up on campus. Yeah. Like it's a small community. I mm -hmm. think, so the thing about campus was that it's like all the kids are in the same school. Most of us go to the same churches. You live in the same neighborhood. So it's like extra, extra close knits, which also means, can also mean extra toxicity mm. because everybody's in everybody's business. But I think for the most part, I felt like I had a really happy childhood. Okay. Like, I really loved growing up on campus. I remember, I don't know about you, but do you remember the first time you realized that normal houses in Ghana have walls around them? Yeah. I remember I was like, ah, As how come, going yeah, here? what's Why going on? you see inside the house? Yes, how like, come, like, they have their gates, walls? So strange. Oh, yeah. I used to, like, the open, the whole open, yeah. you know, things. So yeah. I feel like, I don't know. I don't even think, I think, um, so our mutual friend, Adelaide, so I think she had, they had a doorbell. And to me, it was very weird, because it was like, how come you have to press a bell before you enter? Because you just go into anyone's home, you know? So it was just very different, like doorbells. Mm -hmm. These are things that I saw in like movies and things like, oh, okay, doorbell, mm -hmm. okay, you know. And at a point, you think, well, if you have a wall, that means you're rich. Yeah. Because no, I, so I, 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 because like you are different, like you live in a special, yeah, because oh, there are no more people. We, we just have our houses, like there's no walls. So I feel yeah. like there's something special about you then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. That's true. And like, um, you know, so but I mean, I can I can also share mine where like the household that I grew up in. So I had five brothers and I mean, my childhood, I'll say it was it was a happy childhood as well. Like I you grow up and then you see certain things. You're like, oh, OK, I mean, I think this wasn't too, you know, 
pleasant but for the most part and you can't get you can't get it perfect mm. so for the most part i think you know i had a happy childhood i had friends I think we all had friends and that was the thing about campus because you have so many friends you walk home you together, get home together like, yeah it was able to visit each other easily i feel like we had a very different group like upbringing that experience was different from probably how most of people, people were because you were always with your friends yeah always with your friends like yeah. after school everybody just comes back outside come and play like it was just a yeah. really fun so you meet your friends in school church because we're in the same church. church then what um like um weekends and then you know things that they'll do on campus as well those you know mm -hmm. events and stuff bonfire. We'll meet the bonfire oh my god the bonfire was their best was their like best. if you're not going for the bonfire then it's like i mean why are you, like what are you doing december? <laughs> like, that was like a dirty december that was a dirty december <laughs> The bonfire. I'll start bringing my parents like months before. Like I'm thinking, God, because they're definitely going to say no. Let me mm -hmm, try. Mm -hmm. So and you know, bonfires in the evening. And even though we had that freedom, we're also kind of sheltered. If you think about it, we were, we were. Yeah, it was. It was weird. It's it like was we're a, sheltered, a, a but mix. it was a mix. Yeah, I think. Uh, so the thing about our parents is they were okay with us being friends. Like, oh, be friends with your campus friends, right? But then a hey, evening out. So remember, anytime we would meet. We have to go home before it's dark. Yeah. We, you yeah. have to. Like, it's not, you can't just say, okay, I'm at Elam's house, so mm -hmm. I'm there till, no, 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 no. Come home. So it's like an unspoken curfew. Yes. You just come home before you it's just dark. just know, yes. Mm -hmm. And you know, we thought our parents were strict. Mm -hmm. Me, I still think they were strict, but, you know, someone else, you know, from the outside looking in will think, oh, but you guys had freedom, you could go out. Some yeah. people never got the chance to go out. Yeah. You know, or have friends. But the fact that we're walking in, like, the bush and all sorts of places by ourselves. In the bush, like, uh, what was it called? Mutia Krum, that's what we called it. <laughs> No, honestly, and walking know, on campus, we mm. kids walking in a university campus, campus, like literally predators all around, and like it was just no. I, has like has did any like university students ever stop you and ask the same 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 with me? Like we like, like we were sheltered, but not really sheltered. Sheltered, yeah. Because I remember there was yeah, this time so lectures, yeah, lecturers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, for me, I didn't get that experience, I but that experience. yeah. I found out who my father was and was like, don't tell your parents. <laughs> what? I didn't know this. <laughs> no, so I mean, for me, it was like, I think it was more of the campus boys. Because mm -hmm. we're, and we were, at the time, when it, at the first time, like, a, I'll say a student stopped me. Maybe I was like 12. I was like 12. And I had just done this zigzag <laughs> convo. Stop. So my mom had taken me to the salon. And then I, I then, you know, that scene, so I told them I want zigzag. And, you know, most campus breeders, they can't really breed, but th that salon, they were like, oh, they can do it. They did it, and I was feeling myself. So anyway, after school, I'm going home. And then, th so there were two, there were the two guys. Mm -hmm. They stopped me, and then they asked me my name. Yeah, I mentioned my name. Mm -hmm. So, hey, what school do you go to? This, I said it. You know, and I'm thinking about it. I'm like, wow, that was, yeah, that was wrong. But anyway, mentioned and it all that. prepared. I wasn't prepared. And parents, I don't know why our parents didn't think about it, that... Mm -mm. These are girls in a university campus with so many grown boys yeah. and all of that. Yeah. Let's at least give them some life skills, mm -mm. like prepare them. No. For so I think he said, one of them told the other one that, ah, like in Pigeon, that when I grow up, I'll be very nice. Mm -hmm. Like, you know. And then me, I was happy. Yeah, I was happy. I mean, I'm a compliment. I was very happy. And then I walked off. But again, that was it. At that okay. time, we didn't have phones. There, mm -hmm. there was nothing like that. So it's not like hey, anyone can keep in touch with you or anything like that. Yeah, there was no social media. Yeah. You no know, things like that. So it's either you're going to get kidnapped and then you never see your parents again, or um they'll let you go scot free and that's it. Yes. Or what? You could be raped you could. and left by the road. <laughs> but if you get kidnapped, I feel like it's kind of like it's, it will be part of it. <laughs> so you know, then we 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 yeah we we will go home and we won't even share this with our parents because I yeah. don't think I ever told my mom that it may be this person. You know, do you? She did. You did at, at a point the, the lecturer. The you told, that you I told said, your mom because I didn't actually know his name. I forgot. I don't know. But I told him. I told her. And what did your mom say? He told me that I shouldn't tell you guys. And what did what did he say? She, she was just, she was just like she was now alarmed. Like eh hey, hey the next time he sees you, but I mean it had already happened. It had already happened. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I told him. And and um you know you had two sisters. Mm -hmm. So what was your relationship like with them growing up? So I was really really close to my sisters. Um. Because my the age gap between my, me and my sisters is, is more than 10 years. Mm. So I was close to them, but they were also like my my second mom, second and third moms. Yeah. So yeah, like I used to I used to follow them around everywhere. Mm. 
I used to like their boyfriends come over and I'm also like in like I don't know but they used to I feel like a lot of big siblings will maybe find their little sibling annoying yeah if they did they never let like they 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 just always used to have used to have me around so I had a really close relationship with them yeah and even for me like your like your your older sister to me she was also a big sister to me she was mm-hmm. a big sister to all of us yeah you know so like just from church like Sunday school teacher mm-hmm. then um um I think we were what, what was it well um what was the thing you know back then church church dance groups like Jesus we were part kids. of like yes just for kids <laughs> Got Jesu Kids, and you had to be part of Jesu Kids. Yeah, it was fun. Like we wear uh was it like green and white, like something. It was, it was like PE uniform. It was like PE it uniform. Was PE uniform because it was colors. There was green. There was yellow. Yes, oh. yes, yes. Yeah, there yeah, were colors. Were colors. Yeah. And then we wear white socks, and then we'll tie something to tie some ribbon. ribbon so that when you are, you know, then it will be a bit twirling and things. It was fun. <laughs> no, but yeah, and it was just fun. it was really like I loved, um, like I loved her. I loved mm-hmm. her so much. And I had big, big brothers who were, I mean, I think my oldest brother, she, I mean, he's you know, passed away now, but he was 13 years older than me. Mm-hmm. Then the next brother, 11 years older than me. And then, um, you know, the third brother, nine years older than me, then me, and then my two mm-hmm. brothers. So just like you, I also had like older siblings. Yeah, huge gap. And I also feel like I picked on some things quite, quite early, like mm-hmm. pigeon. Like when I said the boys were speaking, mm-hmm. my brothers were speaking pigeon. They, in fact, they thought I didn't understand pigeon. And I also made them think I didn't understand pigeon. So when you're speaking, I can, mm-hmm. you know, I understood pigeon. I just didn't speak it. Um, girl, you know, they also have girlfriends over, mm-hmm. you know, so I feel like I, in a way, I was also exposed to certain things quite early. But at the same time, you know, I always tell everyone that my big brother is like, they were bad. Everyone knows, I mean, on campus, everyone knew. <laughs> it's like, they were like the bad boys. So they would, they, you know, they They'll be using their life, their, their issues and things to advise me. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, boys are liars. Don't believe them. When a boy says this, you know, mm-hmm. or um, like my, my biggest brother, Bafo. Bafo always tell me things like, you, are, you know, you are beautiful. I'm saying this so that if any boy tells you that you are beautiful, you know, they can't use that to yeah. you know, trick you and things like that. So me, I mean, I feel like in for, for the most part, I grew up confident because of that. But I didn't know it was coming from it, from that place. It was later that I realized, ah, of course you guys were bad. That's why you didn't want me to, you know. But for you, coming over to my house, knowing that I had big brothers um, with this kind of reputation and things like that, did how was that like in your home? Were they mm-hmm. accepting of you coming over and things like that? So I think the very first time I came over to your house, I can't remember how old I was. Because I think you used to come in the beginning, you came over to my place. Yes, a lot. Yeah, I came. So the first time I came over to your house, I remember my mom was like trying to have this whole conversation with me about how I need to be careful because your house is full of boys. And I was wondering, I was like, well, what's she talking about? Because like, well, duh, like I know your brothers already. Yeah. Already, it's not like I've not met. I, was, I, I, I couldn't get why she was just like, you know, just trying to tell me I should be careful. But yeah. she didn't get into any details, but yeah. she just kept on saying I should be careful yeah. and you know that your house is full of boys. I didn't get it. Yeah. But I mean, now I get it. Yeah. Now, yeah. you know, being older, I now go, okay, yeah, I was going to a house with five boys. So obviously like she was just trying like, yeah. And that, yeah. I mean, I, I always sense that and that thing used to piss me off so much because I used to be like, why can't you guys be good? Like why, why why did you have to be the bad boys? You know that everyone was it like was it a problem for you having people come over? Yeah. Yeah, mm. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I know what you think. Yeah, yeah. Even this thing that you're telling me, you've told me before. Oh, yeah, 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 you told me before. Yeah. Told me when we're kids. You told me when we're kids. You told me when we're kids. <laughs> you just said I'm keeping it to yourself. You told me when we were kids and like it used to bother me so much because I was like, you know, you have sisters, mm-hmm. your sisters don't have that reputation. Other people have brothers. Why is that like yeah. we have to have, I mean, yeah, my brothers and I, my younger brothers, you know, and I have to have the big brothers that everyone is warning you against. And it was just very annoying. But I mean, now I'm looking back, I'm like, but then my childhood was fun with them. Fun, fun, like fun. I remember, you know, there was a time when on the run. On the remember on the run on the run was yeah on on it just opened. it was just opened, and then my brothers like they'll go buy ice cream bring yeah, it yeah. like there were all these fun things like having like all these older um I mean you're doing university so these university students coming over and then just hearing their conversations and things like that plus I loved all their girlfriends back then back then mm-hmm. you know when when you're trying to like um impress like the family mm-hmm. because you know so they'll do whatever like if you're going to do their nails their hair everything they'll take, they'll take me so it was fun like it was it was fun i loved it i loved it but yeah so like 
now um you know we we've gone through the you know the 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 bits of having your sister who was like a big sister to all of us mm-hmm. and you know all that and then um you know unfortunately you know she she started to have like struggles with um you know um mental health with her mental health mm-hmm. and what was that like for you and how did your your home change yeah so i mean for her like I said, I was close to my sisters, but I was extra, extra, extra close to her because I think probably because my other sister, around the time we got close, my other sister had gone to school, I think. Mm-hmm. So I don't know, but for some reason I was extra close to her. So I mean, the mental health struggles in itself, I feel like we could cope with in the beginning the issue was just when people started to talk right and people started to make up stories about here that's what made it difficult because i feel like if you are dealing with something in, internally and also actually i think it's i think it actually happened the other way around okay it was people i mean obviously you have to have been having some mental health struggles before you have a break right like that. but there were rumors and things going on around about her and mm-hmm. i think that's like it was a very painful time for her mm-hmm. and i think that's what really like caused the break and things became really difficult for her mm. and then of course it became difficult for the family because she was going through a lot and then now like we already mentioned a small community mm-hmm. so everybody was talking about her and then everybody was talking about their family and I mean, it's only even what last year that I was finding out from you, some of the things that people were saying that mm. I thought I knew everything people were saying, but I didn't even know, like, mm. the, the rumors were great. Really yeah. So it was definitely a really tough time for the family. Yeah. And and that's the thing. I feel like that's the that's the bit about growing up in that small community because, yes, it's fun. Yes, you know, everyone is in everyone's business. But when it's bad, it's bad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And like in our, in our, in our house, even when you find out that maybe, oh, this lecturer's daughter got pregnant. It was like an abomination. Then the entire family comes together to tell you, stay away from. And it doesn't have to be your friend mm-hmm. who is pregnant. Your friend's big your sister friend's is big pregnant. Sister, but stay oh, away stay away from, from that family so that you also don't get pregnant. And I'm wondering mm-hmm. why, like, why, why was that like the culture? As soon as you hear something, I don't know if it's a Ghanaian thing or if that was a campus thing. Yeah. As soon as you hear something, just stay away from them. Stay away from them. Otherwise, you'll corrupt you. And like, even if for, for our house, like I remember, not even just about this, but you know, the pregnancy and things like that in other homes, mm-hmm. my dad telling me to stay away. And I'm thinking, your, your sons are bad. <laughs> you know, like, I'm like, your sons. <laughs> I'm sorry about it. it. <laughs> I'm sorry, but your sons have a reputation. Like, how are you here That's so sitting true. on this high horse telling me that, you know, and then he would tell me, you know, let me tell you, if you get pregnant, no, and you give birth and you bring the child home, you you won't leave. I will leave. I said, I can't stay. Yeah, that's what he wow. told me. So I was scared. And mind you, these are, this, this is the same parents who has never spoken to me about sex. Ne- you, they will never sit you down. They'll jump to their pregnancy. They'll jump to their pregnancy. And I'm like, okay. So that period from me not knowing to knowing, are you not going to fill me in on like what it's like, this and that? Like, you know, nothing. So exactly. So you want me to not get pregnant? Maybe tell me how to avoid Yes. That. Like, we haven't spoken about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think it was like a generational thing. Like for you being in a home with girls, mm-hmm. do you feel you were, I mean, how do you learn about some of these things? Like when it comes to like um, sex, ed, sex ed and stuff my like sisters. that. My sisters. Yeah. My sisters. I feel like literally everything about life growing up was my sisters who mm-hmm. told me. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, my mom never had to have that awkward conversation with me. Definitely not my dad. My dad, there's no way we're ever having that conversation. Yeah. But it was my sisters. Like they would, they just, they just taught me, taught, like literally, I remember my sis- sister literally explaining to me what sex was mm. and like this is penetration and this so wow. like ex- explaining everything explaining periods um what the first period is called like like life skills what's that was life skills life right skills. Today. like yeah life skills life skills in school was surface like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but like my sisters literally especially my, my older sister how old were you at that time when when she told you all these things i might have been in class four that's what so maybe that was like what 10 10 10 yeah 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 
Okay. Yeah. So she, yeah, yeah. she was, she That's... literally was just explained everything. And even like, just even like talking about kissing, how like you can easily progress when she start kissing. It, mm. Like she, she told me everything. Mm. So like mm. why you need to be careful because like, it was just an open book. Yeah, yeah. Because so for me, no awkwardness for me around the sex topic. At least yeah. not at home, not with them, because they were very yeah. open. Because for me, I don't, I don't know. No one, no one spoke to me about it. I think when I got my first period, and that must have been in um, JSS. I feel I know when I see JSS, our ages are going to show because everyone says JHS now. JSS, <laughs> JSS one, me too. Yeah, JSS that was 13. yeah, that thirteen exactly. That was when my mom. And that one, I think she told me like the process, like, you know, when you're sunny pad, you do this, you know, you do that. Mm -hmm. She never, um, I'm like, oh, okay, but like, what else? You know, mm -hmm. but she never, it was just that. And I think, oh no, I think at that time they told me that. So now you can get pregnant. Yes, you can get pregnant. That was it. But the word sex, <laughs> that, that, no, 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 that word, it was like, it was just like a taboo. We don't talk about yeah. it. We never spoke about it. My dad, the first time my dad, my dad was trying to ask me, if I was, I, I don't know if you're trying to ask me if I was a virgin or that was like way older when I was in university mm -hmm. or if sure. I asked him. Which I even tried to have trust. Was he prepared for like, what, what answer was he expecting? What if he said no? <laughs> like, what, like, where was he going with the conversation? When he asked, he, so he tried to ask and he used Ghana AIDS Commission. That's where he started the conversation from. So my uncle at the time was heading Ghana AIDS Commission. So, I remember, and the funny thing, when he started the conversation, I knew where I was heading. I was just waiting for him because I knew the thing would be awkward and hard for him to get there. So he starts talking about, you know, Ghana is coming. You know, your uncle, you know, he's heading Ghana is commission, you know, God rest him, you know, so he's dead now. And, um, you know, then it was like coming, coming, coming closer, coming closer. And AIDS, you know, AIDS, when you have sex, then AIDS, you know, then mm -hmm. you can die. Mm -hmm. AIDS, 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 sex. Okay, finally. Yeah, so I hope you're not doing any of this. <laughs> I could have laughed. I thought, oh no, daddy. That's the end of the question. Hey, what, what, what else did you say? Exactly. Because she was like, like, she was like, was he prepared? Like, what, what then, answer was and this he? Was he was like, eh, because, you know, so at that time I was in the go on pens. Mm -hmm. Like, because one in the room, one in the room that made you so it's like one in the room that paid for you. Eh, mm -hmm. because, and I'm thinking, okay, you paid one in the room for me. Um, You came to, so he, he had come to visit me earlier mm -hmm. and he was furious. He was what? like, ah, I feel like this hostel is only, it's only men. I was like, you can see girls walking. He's like, no, I only saw guys. And at that time, I didn't even tell him that my floor. Mm -hmm. So he thought, he at first, he assumed that every block was like, you know, like, like a particular gender for mm -hmm. every block. Mm -hmm. Then he goes in and realizes, okay, I can mixed. see. Yeah. So he's like, okay, it's mixed. So I think in his mind, it was um, either sections or floors. Mm -hmm. I couldn't even tell that my next room <laughs> was guys. <laughs> like, if he knew, he'd have been like, what? Because when he came, he said, no, I think I really saw it. I was like, Daddy, I could see. I mean, there are girls. Even I didn't even want him to come because mm -hmm. at the time, so if there's an older guy comes to see you, so almost, almost like that's your sugar daddy. Sugar daddy yeah. So I was like, I'm not, I can't, which platform am I going to stand to go and announce that? Hey, guys, this is my dad. This is my dad. <laughs> this is not. So yeah, it was it was just really a lot. Now, kind of like, I want us to bring, bring it back again to our childhood and everything, the sisterhood and all that. For me, given all these things, right, mm -hmm. and not having a lot of, um, information, let me put it that way. There was so much that I also learned from you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I mean, and you know this, like even basic things like money. Mm -hmm. I didn't even, like, I didn't even, and I even had big brothers, but I had no one break down like money. Like, oh, remember those times so, like 600 cities are coins. So it was like the 500 cities mm -hmm. coin. And then <laughs> there was, is it 100 cities coin, right? 200. Is it cities coin? No, there was 200 cities coin too, but there was 500 cities coin. Yeah, and then there was 100 cities yeah, coin. Yeah. So we take, so I used to take 600 cities to mm -hmm. school. I don't and know then you you think about about that I was like standing with seven hundred cities to, mm -hmm. to school, and I didn't know because me I'll go and buy some. Don't give me chain and I'll just take it like that. Because I'm thinking that's the. <laughs> but you would like no, you know this is how it's supposed to be. Maybe the mm -hmm. thing is I don't know what was whatever password. So they'll give you this, you know, back and honestly, like looking back, I'm like wow, that was like it's almost like a century ago. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like you 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 taught me that you taught me ampy. Yeah, I remember. Because there's no one to play ampy with. Um, skipping. I, skipping. I didn't even know how to skip. You taught me that. Like at home, I think at home it was football. I don't even know how I didn't turn out like a, tom a tomboy because it was football. It's actually really surprising. Football, basketball. Um, now I don't even know how to do any of those things. So, but I used to play basketball. Yes, we had a tree. Eh? Mm -hmm. We didn't have a hoop. So there was a tree that had act like mm -hmm. this. So if the ball goes behind the tree, like over the, 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 the branch, 
That's yeah, it. Like that's you made. Yeah, you made. So you made a shot. So that was it. Like that's how my brothers were playing. That's how they taught me to play. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, what's it called? Bicycle ride. I feel bicycles. Yeah, that's it. And I remember my mom sitting me down one day and said, "You know, listen, you are a girl. Do you know you're a girl." And I was like, "Yeah." And she's like, "Look at all the scars on your leg. Mm-hmm. Very soon you're going to grow up. Which man is going to like this and things?" And I was just thinking. Okay. And that's we really, like that was when you know so she made me stop. I mean, so I stopped all those games while I was still like, bicycle riding. My dad felt yeah. it was important. Um, only to, to find out recently that my dad didn't even know how to ride bicycles. Mm. Yeah, so he 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 wanted us to learn and expected me to learn because he didn't know. But I had no idea because that was the one gift that I knew that if I outgrow a bicycle, my dad would buy me another bicycle. And I remember you used to know how to ride a bicycle and I couldn't ride a bicycle. Oh, you couldn't ride a bicycle? You still don't know how to ride a bicycle? still don't know how to ride a bicycle. Wow, that's so interesting. That's very interesting. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there were, I mean, there were all these things that we picked up from each other. Um, so when um, you know, your sister started struggling, with the with the mental health issues, it affected me as well because obviously I, I said she was like my big sister, but just not also being able to come to your home because like I said, there's there's stigma, mm-hmm. and I think at the time there wasn't much understanding when it when it came to things like that. Yeah, and I I also believe that the two of us didn't talk about it enough. I think it's now that we talk about yeah. it, but with you, you couldn't even talk about it without crying, so yeah. we never spoke about it. Mm-hmm. Like, why do you think that you struggled so much yeah. with it? First of all, I think when we were kids, mm-hmm. I never spoke about it because I feel like I didn't fully understand. I remember just being angry in the beginning, like angry with the church because the rumors started. No, they didn't. A lot of them started in the church. Yeah. I remember just being angry. And then when it got to the point where like, you know, like my friends couldn't come over and things like that. Mm-hmm. I feel like I've still because I mean, you know, this. like I have some repressed memories from yeah. that time. I feel like I still don't remember some of the things. So I cannot actually remember like when it was in the thick of things Mm -hmm. and people couldn't, I I don't remember how I was dealing with it. Mm -hmm. Like, I think we still used to come to church. Yeah. Right. We still used to come to church. But there were all these whispers. Yes. So I remember like going to church, like, I got to a point I hated going to church, which was strange because like you mentioned, we used to love church. We used to love the dancing. We used to love all of that. But like, honestly, the details, I cannot even remember. So I feel like probably in my mind, it was just, well, you were not there for me to talk to anymore. So I just didn't talk mm. about it. But then again, we could have talked about it in school. But what know, would but we have even said? If, yeah. But yeah. also I think I'm pretty sure my parents had said, you know, like, let's just keep this, you know, at home. Mm. I'm, I'm pretty sure that I was not allowed to talk to or encouraged to talk to anybody mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because as much as I don't remember a lot of the details, I do remember when my second sister got married, mm-hmm. I remember feeling like, wow, like, so now she's married, she's left the house. She has somebody to vent to and share these things with, but my parents have each other. I have nobody I can mm-hmm. talk to now. So I remember feeling that way. And I remember like, it was really, really difficult for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in in some ways, I feel like the church definitely filled you guys, and you know, the, living in a country where you know majority are Christians and yeah. we you know we love church so much, I feel that the church deals with things poorly. A lot of churches deal with things poorly because you're almost shunned if you are different or you know. And and this is a mental health challenge isn't something that you can say oh it's a person's fault and you know you did this, but what one of the th- yeah. The, the issue mm-hmm. is that like it's not even that it was seen as a mental maybe now yeah. things would be different true if somebody's going through something maybe now you know everybody knows about therapy mental health yeah all of that but back then it's just seen as if any if, if you are different if people have heard this about you then it means that you're a witch yeah true so true, it goes because straight there. It's true. And that's, that is the problem. It's true. That like, was the problem. We weren't just shunned because it was mental. That's true. We're shunned because now we are being, the family is being accused of. That's actually true because it's wild how like it escalated to a point where it got, it got to that point where it was like witchcraft. Mm-hmm. Like who, you know, and, and this is the same person who was in the church, she was a Sunday school teacher, teaching us and all that. We were sitting at her feet. I always saw you this thing. We're literally at her feet yeah. because she'd be sharing like the Bible with us and she made us question so much. Like I love the fact that she opened our minds mm-hmm. to so much 
at the time. And I think at the time, because, you know, growing up in a conservative church like that, they don't like you to question anything. Yeah. And I feel like that's why it was also easy for them to reach that conclusion. Because it's like, this girl's already so different. True. She's already like stepping on our toes because mm. she, we're kids, we're speaking in tongues. True. It's true. It's like, true. Hey. It, was, it was too oh, extra true. for them. So I feel like it was easy to jump to that conclusion. Yeah. Like, yeah. aha, something had to be wrong with here. Yeah. 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 And like, how your relationship with her, like, did you feel like, okay, like I've lost my sister now? Or mm-hmm. like, what, like, how was that, was that, was that on and off? How was it like? So, like I said, still a lot of repressed memories. Yeah. But I feel like, I don't really remember. Also, she they, they took her out of the country. Right. My parents took her out of the country for some time. So I feel like that also, I, I didn't have to face how I was feeling because she was not around for a while. But I think it was in later years, maybe around, because this happened when we were around 10. Oh, okay. Yeah. You realize, okay. It happened when I was around 10. Okay. And I know because a lot of my memories between like 10 and 13 are lost. Wow. So it was like a trauma response. Yeah. Yeah. So I know it was around 10. Yeah. And I think, yeah, around like GSS there, that was 13. That was when she had left. Mm. So it was when I was older, mm-hmm. maybe like high school, university there, that I realized I started really realizing how I felt about the thing that like this person that's like, like this person that like I idolize mm. is basically like that version of her is no more exists. True. So True. it was later that I really felt how I was feeling mm. because I didn't know how to deal with it when I was a child and then also she left. Yeah. And um, how do you feel that manifested in your relationships mm-hmm. um, and then now as a mom? In my relationships. Do you feel, um, you know, in terms of friendships and mm-hmm. in terms of even like guys, but then let's talk about friendships. Um, did, you, did you feel like left alone? Do you feel alone in any way if a friendship ended, for instance, or, mm-hmm. um, you know, yeah, I'm actually not. I feel like I'm actually not realizing. I'm like, that's probably true. Yeah. I think it's probably like one particular friendship mm. that I think you know who yeah. that was that yeah. when that friendship ended, I was really, really hurt by it. Mm-hmm. And come to think of it, I think that was why. Mm. Because this is somebody that I used to see as like my sister. True. And then suddenly I felt like abandoned. So yes, there's that in terms of friendship. But I think probably generally in my relationships my human relationships with people it's now as an adult that i'm realizing that all those things that happened earlier have or used to because now i don't really i'm working on not doing that anymore but used to make me always feel the need to prove myself to people okay like always prove to people just yeah what were you trying to prove like if, if it's friendship that like I'm a good friend, like I just wanted okay. people to see that I was a good person. Mm. I didn't want people to ever have any reason to think anything negative of me. So I, I would overextend myself okay. for friends. Right. Or for people that I cared about. Right. Did you ever live in fear thinking, oh, um, anyone could turn on me at any time? Did you, did you yeah. feel that way? Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah. And I think for me feeling that way, it's, with friendships in a way but more so with like i think it's it's like a fear that i associate with popularity okay that like the more people know you the more people put you on a pedestal the more easy they can yes like pull you down and then like being up there means nothing Mm. being up there means nothing because people will just easily pull you down yeah but now it's like you're putting yourself out there more mm-hmm. and it's intentional, you know, for your business, your brand, all that. Do you still have that fear sometimes? It's still something I think of. It's yeah. definitely still something I think of, but not to the point. I think because a lot of these things I've been dealing, I've been addressing them 
okay. over the years in terms of my mental health. So I think I'm in a better position now. But it's still something I think of, but it's still not going to slow me down. It's more of um, I'm just going to try and put my authentic self out there. Yeah. And at least in my relationships with people, you know, be genuine and all of that. Because there's, there's really so much you can do. Yeah, like, yeah. There's really only so much you can do. If people will talk, they'll still talk. And the thing is that I can relate so much with this because, I mean, we, we both have parents who are in the, the public eye. Mm -hmm. Let's put it that way, even away from um, campus and all that. And, I mean, I went through that in my in my home where mm -hmm. you know, my dad, you know, everyone knew him. And then one day, everyone turned on him. Mm -hmm. And it's like, lies. You're hearing yeah. lies. You are hearing lies and, um, you know, I think I think that I have to dedicate a whole episode for that. But, you know, you are seeing things printed in newspapers about your family and you're waking up to, I'm reading, I'm like, this is not even true. So some, a lot of times when I when I see people in the media, people in like, I mean, I'm talking people online, people's issues being talked about. I have to take it with a grain of salt because I'm like, were you guys really there? Exactly. Like, did you see, like, are you sure? You, exactly. Who said this, mm -hmm. you know? So, I mean, uh, this, yeah, like you said, the same way people pull you up, that's the same way they can pull you, you know, down. But at the same time, I try not to let that consume me too much because, again, I know I'm putting my, um, my authentic self out there. And, I mean, you're either going to love me or hate me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's what it is. Um, now, moving on to today, like, you're a mom. Um, so you're a mom to a yeah, feisty <laughs> girl oh that I love so much. And how do you feel that, um, your, your upbringing has impacted your parents in today? Um, seeing all that you've been through so far mm -hmm. with hair, does that make you extra protective of hair? Yeah, I'm definitely extra protective of it. It's only recently, I mean, we talked about this recently mm -hmm. that somebody, brought something up to me and it made me realize that even in church, because I mean, we are not in the same church that we're in growing up, mm -hmm. but even in church, I am still protective of it. Like I literally want to hold her hand everywhere. I don't want her to like go and bother anyone. Like I just, I always, I just don't want her to, I don't know. I just feel the need to protect her. Yeah. I just always feel the need to protect her from somebody saying something mean to her or from giving somebody the reason to think anything about her yeah because she can be extra mm. like she she can she can be extra she has the best of intentions but maybe she will just go in so i don't know i just always want to protect her yeah do you see any similarities between your sister and her in, in terms of being outgoing and stuff like that in terms of being um the person that people gravitate to, yes. Mm. Because even in her class, the teacher is always saying that, like, more social. She's always calling her more social. Like, sometimes when I pick her up from school, she'll hug everybody in the class mm. before. Or they'll always say bye, bye, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. In terms of that, like, she being someone that people gravitate to, yeah. I, I see that from my sister, but also from my, my husband, because that's how... Yeah, Sometimes true, true, like that. true, true. And, like, in, term, like, in your marriage, do you... Are these things that are these some of the things that you've addressed already with your with your with your husband with Senna? Like, mm -hmm. does he know some of the things that you are dealing with? Mm -hmm. You know, does he know a lot about like your upbringing? Like, does he know that it it, it has impacted some of your decision making and things yeah. like that? Does he get it? Mm -hmm. He definitely knows. I I think he has had to come. He, he came to know because, mm -hmm. like I said, a lot of the things I wasn't really dealing with them before, but it's it's being married having a child that's in the past few years that like all these things have come up. So, I mean, and before we got married, we talked about like everything, everything. And so he knew about a bit about my family history, but because also those memories had been repressed, mm -hmm. he didn't know fully because I didn't think to tell him because it was somewhere in my mind that I had forgotten about. So he, yeah, he's come to know a lot of these. But how were you able to bring that? Like, was it, what do you do? Was it therapy? Was it like talking to friends? Like, was mm -hmm. it? How, As in what, how did? How, how were you able to recognize some of the things that, you know, you think you thought that you had suppressed and all that? How did? Yeah. So, I mean, it was a group therapy session. You had oh, right. your, yeah. Oh, so that's, that's, yeah, hey. That's where it happened. Oh. So I'm like, you know, that retreat changed my life. 
Because okay. was, after that, that I started therapy, all those things. So I realized, how do I have like a whole part of my childhood I have forgotten about? I mean, just before you continue, like just to explain to the to the listeners. Okay. So it was the you had the L retreat. Yes. Yeah, so that was like twenty two. Yeah. Right. Yes. That was twenty twenty two. It was in October. October twenty twenty two. Yes. October twenty twenty two. We had a group therapy session. So this this um retreat was for like moms mm -hmm. like we were stressed. Mm -hmm. We just wanted to get away and then you know have different yeah. sessions. So we had like the group therapy, yeah. which was like around a bonfire. Mm -hmm. Then we had like, you know, other things like yeah. arts, journaling, stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. And it was supposed to be healing. Mm -hmm. So was that a group therapy session that really like changed everything for me? Because I remember that they asked, what was the question that they even asked? If there is someone that, they said, is there someone that, do you remember the question? Is there someone that you, you wish you had said something to? To I think so before. Uh, yeah, something like or that. Something like yeah. that. Yeah, I, I think, think it had to do with loss. Yes, I think it had to do with loss. No, but yeah. they said the person could be alive or dead. Or dead. It True. wasn't necessarily loss. It was just I don't True. some question like that. Yeah. And I remember everybody went round. I st I said my own the first time, but I remember feeling like I have something to say. I have something to say. I didn't really know what it was, but I had something to say. I remember I was holding your hand. Yes, sure. And I was like, I have something to say. And then as, as I was talking that it was coming out. True. And I was crying because I was remembering there. Yeah. Like true. I was remembering over there. True. So true. wow, I didn't know. I didn't know that was like the first. I thought maybe I started therapy before. No. And then so it was after that you started therapy. After that I started because I was oh. like, I was like, that part of my life has shaped so many things about me now. Mm -hmm. What other things am I not realizing that have, have impacted me now? Mm. And even like I said, there's still things I don't remember now. Mm. So yeah, that, that was after that, that I started to, to start therapy. Yeah. But I think generally with your, with your personality, mm -hmm. you are not very like open, mm -hmm. you know? So that kind of, it's it plays it plays a role in why so much was suppressed but of course like i said mm -hmm. it was it was definitely a trauma response but yeah. even apart from that your personality because you know there are also others that um because of that they become extra loud and yeah. you know like they have different ways of dealing with it and i rather just went more into you, the exactly so i went to high school funny yeah enough. that was when yeah that was when the switch happened when, yeah when i went to high school that i like another side of me came out and also from high school i feel like you became very assertive Mm. I, yeah, yeah, I've never told you this thing, but you have this thing you do where, let's say, if you are talking and you get interrupted, you continue talking. Mm. You no, no, <laughs> you from do that. No, from yeah, from from there. It was when I noticed. Yeah, mm. if you are talking, like you will continue talking, but you would be a little bit louder. Yeah, like I've never told you this thing before, but I've noticed. Like, That's so yeah, if you are talking and someone cuts you and the person says something, you will continue talking and you'll be a little bit louder. Always. Interesting. Yeah. And I was like, how oh, like, you become... I have to this about myself now. You become assertive. What now. I did notice after I went to Gehe was people started saying I was friendly. Ah, because people, before people thought you weren't friendly. I was a snob. Everybody thought I was too known. And come to think of it, there's a probability that... And I remember a lot of the people saying that I become friendly and I was church people. There's uh -huh. a probability that I closed off yes. from church because yeah. of that whole experience. Because I kept on wondering... Why are they saying I'm friendly now? I feel like this is just always me. I was like, oh. this I was like just because I'm actually just like, in my mind, I had cut most of you people off. Yeah. And now I feel like high school is like a fresh, whatever. It starts. A fresh start for me. So when I came back, yeah, now I was I'm just like being yeah. normal and then they think I'm now being friendly. Yeah. Plus, I mean, in Ghana, generally, if you don't talk, you are seen yeah. as too known. I'm That's like... True. People are introverts and they're allowed to be, mm -hmm. you know. So I think that was that was the other thing. But for me, I think to me, you had always been friendly. Um, yeah. I think but I'm even too friendly. I don't I feel like I don't go back. What do you mean you're too friendly? <laughs> Is that what's going on? Like, yeah, like yeah, like, friendly to like the yeah, that I mean <laughs> where the does unfriendliness take you? Like what? <laughs> no, I feel like I'm too friendly in that. Uh-huh. Sometimes I allow people, that's why I'm like, it's interesting to me that I talk about, let's say when somebody's talking about me, I talk louder. Because I feel like sometimes I allow people to take advantage of me or take me for granted. So I just feel like mm. it comes from my being too friendly. So I make myself too accessible. Brother. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe all in my head. That's what you say. I rather feel like I'm being too friendly. I rather need to like. Yeah, I think, I think for you, whenever you think you're being taken advantage of, 
you start to blame yourself for something, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's really just that person. That yeah. person really is just taking advantage of you. And then, I mean, if you, if you allow them, they, they will. It's really not, it has nothing to do with you. But I mean, these are all things that, again, like we, we work out in therapy and all that. And like, I'm glad you started therapy. And even, I mean, even you are telling me that, no, I have to, I've started therapy before and stopped. And that was only because I felt at the time, I don't know if I wasn't ready or I felt like I was being confronted with too much of the truth Mm -hmm. and I wasn't ready to handle it. Because you don't know how to sit in your emotion. I don't know how to sit in my emotion. And it's like, it was forcing you to do that. It was. It was too much for you. I can't. Like, I, like, I don't know how to, like, maybe the whole place is quiet. I sit down. And then all the thoughts are rushing. I'm like, never. I'll distract myself with something mm-hmm. else. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have to keep. And that's the thing. And that's that's why, I keep... why you talk sometimes. Because you don't want to sit down and think about it. So you keep on talking so that you're not in your head. It's true. <laughs> it's very true. It's like, it's really like, there's just so much to unpack when it comes to this life journey. But yeah, it's it's definitely something that I think I'm, I'm working through it now. Nowadays, I'm being forced. Like, I think I started, well, baby steps. Like, I... There was a point where now, I, I don't remember last time I drove, but mm-hmm. when I was driving, before I got pregnant, um, I wouldn't turn on the, the radio yeah. or any mm-hmm. music. I would sit in silence and drive. And when the kids are talking like in the, at the back, I'll stop them from talking because I'm like, I can't hear my thoughts. I want to hear my thoughts. Mm-hmm. So that, I feel like baby steps, like that was one of the steps that I took little, little by little. Sometimes I wake up very early in the morning because the entire house is quiet. Everyone is asleep. Mm-hmm. So that I can, and my mind is just more like, okay, so this thing happened. What am I going to do about it now? Kind of thing. I like to kind of take action and work on things versus like, oh, play the victim. And the entire last year, if no one played a victim more than me, like I was the certain things. I mean, last year was hard, but I really played, like I would cry. God, why me? Mm-hmm. I can't believe this is my life now. I really went through it last year. And, I mean, I'll, I'll share 2023, you know, one of these days when I'm very, yeah, one day, hard, hard, hard year. But yeah. Anyway, Elon, it was amazing having you as always. I feel like anytime we chat mm-hmm. in real life, no, on your podcast, mm-hmm. it is therapy. Mm-hmm. I feel like this was like a therapy session. I'm so glad that you're in my corner if I'm never told you, Elon. Like, I love you so, so much. I needed you when I was younger. I still need you today. If I didn't have you, I don't know what I would have done. Hey, man, I know about when you come on this podcast because I made it through the whole episode without <laughs> crying. <laughs> like when I talk about like the sister I needed and I, and I like those times when I used to be sad that God didn't give me a sister. I was like, thank God I have you. And I mean, I just like, God bless you. I'm so glad that we talk, we talk every day. And I know it's not normal to like our spouses, but we talk every day. And I'm glad I have someone to talk to every single day. So thank you, Elon. Because honestly, you. you know, like, I feel like the past three, four years, if I didn't have you in my corner, I think I would have literally just gone mad. Yeah. <laughs> because I mean, you know, you know, some of the things, yeah. most of the things. Like yeah. everything, <laughs> and it's just been insane. I feel like life keeps getting more and more insane. <laughs> like it's true. That's the that's like the 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 weird part. Life keeps getting more and more insane. So like yeah. I don't know how I've done it. I don't. I like I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.